Uh, this morning we have our first Toasting Topics of the Year. Uh, traditionally it's always been with the Anderson County Legislative Delegation. We're very excited to, to have them here at Tucker's Restaurant. Uh, it's, it's the week before they go into session. Uh, we've got some new members here. We have some returning members uh, in our delegation. It's, it's always very exciting. They're going to give us kind of an update on what they project uh, this upcoming year may be like. Uh, they'll be here to answer some questions from constituents and business owners of the chamber. Uh, so as usual, you know, we're excited to have them. Uh, you know, they do a great job representing us in Columbia. We have a great delegation and, and they, they're always very responsive to the needs of the chamber and needs of the business community and we look forward to supporting them in Columbia as they uh, work to make things better not only in Anderson but across the state of South Carolina. How closely does the chamber work with the delegation? Oh, very closely. We have a public policy committee to where we're always working with them on uh, legislative proposals. A lot of times they'll send the chamber and, and the chamber membership uh, pieces of legislation they think may impact them and their businesses. Uh, Pam Christopher, the, the CEO of the chamber, she, she's in contact with them a lot. And, and there we go to Columbia sometimes and meet with them. Uh, a lot of times when they come back to Anderson, uh, you know, they meet with small groups of us just to, to bounce ideas off of people. And Because at the end of the day, a lot of the, the legislation that the chamber pushes for is pro-business, obviously. Uh, and so they want to make sure they have the input of the, the chamber membership, which is vast majority business owners, uh, and make sure they have that input to, to take back to Columbia for their subcommittee committee meetings, committee meetings, and then the full House session and Senate sessions. Uh, we have a great turnout this morning. Uh, I don't know how many we have. This is one of the largest turnouts we've had, I believe. Uh, obviously, I know this is one of the most exciting Toasting Topics we have. Uh, I'm Kyle Newton. I have the pleasure to serve as the board chair this year for the Anderson Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, this is probably my favorite Toasting Topics we do all year also. Uh, it's great to hear from the delegation before they go into session next week. Uh, we have an amazing Anderson County delegation, they do a lot for Anderson County, uh, they do a lot for the state, so we definitely appreciate y'all being here. Uh, first off, Pam and Brandy have given me a list of people to recognize. It is a huge list, so we, if, I, if I miss you, I apologize. Uh, but first off, I want to recognize some of our board members from the chamber. I know Katie, most of you here, running around. Oh, there we go, in the back. Uh, Josh Rafini, saw him coming in, Amanda Taylor, AT&T, Holly Harrell. Uh, Dalton Freeman's here. He's our new, one of our newest board members, HMR back there. Uh, John Wright Jr. is here. He's chair-elect, so definitely always appreciate him being here. Uh, we have lots of other officials in the room. I know Alan Sims is here from Belton, shook his hand coming in. Uh, Paula Payton, uh, Mayor Burton came up a moment ago, saw him. Uh, obviously, as always, Rick Atkins is here from Congressman Duncan's office. Uh, Logan Kipling, uh, representing Senator Graham. Uh, and then uh, I guess we get to double dip. John and I are also here uh, representing the city and county councils. Uh, there, there's actually so many people in here that it's hard to recognize everybody, but there's a lot of people in this, in this room who actually just get it done. I want to give a shout out just because I'm up here to Matt Hogan right now. Matt Hogan works for the county. Matt Hogan has been very busy this week. Uh, he is over roads and bridges, and we got a lot of rain. So this man has been working all week. So uh, I had to text him about an issue the other day, and Matt gets it done. So right now, that's who I'm thinking about, you know, people who actually get it done. Well, good morning. We're excited to have such a large group today, and we look forward to having you in all of the Toasts and Topics because we've got slated a great group of speakers this year. <clears throat> Wanted to let you know on the upcoming events, you'll see I think everybody received this agenda at their table, and it has all of our upcoming events for you to look at. And we hope that you'll look at those, register for the events, and we look forward to seeing you at those uh, future upcoming events. You can also go at any time to www.andersonscchamber.com and see all of our events listed there and easily click and register. If you ever have problems, call Brandy. Brandy, wave your hand on the back, and uh, you can get us at 226-3454. She'll make sure she takes special care of you guys. Um, we have a great group of speakers this morning. And we're excited for them to tell you, I tell you, they work hard for us every day. And we're just really proud. We've got a great delegation and we're just happy to have them with us today. I will say that we've had a couple that were, um, had conflicting meetings that are out of town. And also would at, like to ask you to be thinking about Jay West. He has some upper respiratory things going on. So he didn't want to come and spread the wealth. So I know everybody up here appreciates that, right? So um, he wasn't able to be with us at the last moment. He kept hoping he'd feel better and could come but he just didn't want to risk that. So um, today we'll go ahead and start, and I hate it because 
Mike, I'm sorry, you're eating and I'm gonna keep you from doing that. So we're gonna let them go one by one to kind of update you on the things the committees they're involved in. Also, what legislation they might have worked to try to pass last year that they didn't get passed, that they wanna push forward or anything they want to have accomplished this year and try to get started. So Mike, we will start with you, Senator Gambrell. Thank you, let's welcome him. Good morning. We get the worst out of the way early. So I told Paul Brown told me he said one thing be short. I said you don't have to worry about that with me because I got food down there on the other end. But uh, thank you so much for having this, Pam. Appreciate what the chamber does. Thank y'all for showing up this morning and, and showing an interest in what we do. Um, we've got a good delegation. We've got some new faces on the delegation, and we welcome them to our delegation. Our new chairman is Representative Ann Fader. She'll do a fine job. She's been telling us all what to do for years anyway, so now it's official. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, in the Senate this year, uh, we start next Tuesday, uh, January 10th. Uh, Tuesday will be kind of a light day. Wednesday is the governor's inauguration. If you get the opportunity to attend an inauguration in person, please do. It's, it's quite an event, and it doesn't happen every four years, sometimes every eight years. Uh, in this part over six years, but uh, if you get it, it's, it's, it's really a neat thing to see uh, You know, it's uh, we're I'm, I'm glad our governor's been going through the inauguration Governor McMaster I think has done a wonderful job Considering everything he's been through I tell him what you know, we're just now coming out of COVID or at least we thought we were coming out of COVID um, But you know, I, I told him in a meeting about a month ago I told him, I said, you know, we were all worried about our individual families. I said, what if you, I said, I can't imagine being worried about 5.2 million people. And I think he did a wonderful job. Uh, the overall state of the economy in South Carolina is good. Uh, in spite of everything that's happened and everything that's, you know, has been going on for the last couple of years, our state's humming. We're gonna have another surplus this year. And I think after this year, maybe, when reality may set in, but uh, you know, and it's all due to a lot of the things that he instituted along by working with the General Assembly to try to keep our state going. We've had the biggest year we've ever had in economic development. Uh, you know, I don't, everybody saw about the big announcement down in Berkeley County. Um, you know, that that's an, I, everybody gets all excited about battery powered electric cars and all this stuff. And, the one thing they neglect is we've got the we've got the king daddy of everything right here in Anderson. Robert Bosch Company is developing a hydrogen cell. It's going to blow the battery stuff out of the water because it can do fire trucks, it can do 18 wheelers, and you don't have to stop every two hours and charge it. Uh, you know this technology was developed right here in Anderson, and I've made the governor very aware of. Uh, you know, of what we've got going on. He's been met with the Bosch folks to see what they're going on. We're real excited about that. Um, as far as the Senate agenda this year, um, the two, I guess three things after yesterday. Uh, the two things that we talked about, I don't know, I think some of the AMED folks may be here. Uh, CON, Certificate of Need, is coming back up. Um, you know, there's, there's the, the first bill we'll have, I've got a medical affairs meeting Thursday morning, and that's the first bill up is CON. Uh, there's some that wants to do away with certificate of need. There's some of us that want to reform certificate of need. Uh, you know, the, the argument every time, and I've been saying this for years, I represent part of Anderson County and now all of Abbeville County. Uh, you know, everybody talks about let the free market system work. Well. Free market works good if you're in Rock Hill, Greenville, Columbia, and Charleston. Come to Abbeville. And I think Representative Gagnon will back me up on this. Uh, you know, free market doesn't give us time of day because there's just not enough. It's 25,000 people in all Abbey County. Uh, you know, that's what we've got to somehow balance. Those people's health care and those people's lives are just as important as the other folks. Uh, the things that we need to do with CON, is a lot of time. Yeah, one of the most ridiculous things about CON, if an MRI machine goes down or you know craps out or whatever, they got to go through the whole CON process just to replace that machine. That's crazy, you know. But there's things like that that we can fix, uh, you know. And, and there's things that we need to look at. So we'll see. Uh, the Senate passed it out last year, uh, eliminating CON. 
Um, but, uh, you know, we passed it last year, and I'm, I think we'll get it to the floor, no problem, this year and begin the debate. Um, the other thing that was the uh, topic of our last meeting was uh, bond reform, bail and bond reform. Uh, we got, and I don't know if Chad's here, but you know, we've got, we've got too many people when, when your sheriff and your deputies know the bad guys by first name, something's way wrong. And what, you know, we've got to do whatever we need to do. David deals with it all the time. Um, you know, we've, we've got to fix this. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that if you're out on bond and you do something, you know, you, have to put, you only have to put down just a little bit of money to get a bond. If you're out on bond and you break the law again, you're responsible for that entire bond or the bondsman is. That'll fix a lot of that, I think. But those are the two things um, that, uh, in course, after the Supreme Court ruling yesterday, on the uh, fetal heartbeat bill. Uh, we'll be addressing that again also. I was just looking through y'all's, uh, this chamber's um, thing, uh, the increase in education. Uh, you know, it, it all goes back to our students. You know, we've been blessed in Anderson County with all the economic development that we've got. You know, you got 500 jobs here, 1,000 jobs here. We gotta find some people to fill them. You know, the number one question they ask is can I make a profit? Number two question is, can I get employees? And that's that's what, you know, we're all fighting, but it, it hadn't slowed us down. Uh, the economic development and infrastructure, uh, we're getting ready to start handing out most of the ARPA money. Uh, I serve on the Rural Infrastructure Authority for Water and Sewer. Uh, we'll be handing out those grants. I think the last I heard was about the middle of February. They've pretty well gone through all of them. And you know, we gave uh, 900 million dollars to the Rural Infrastructure Authority, and last time I heard the requests were up to about two billion. So we'll see. <laughs> but uh, we're continuously working on our business climate, along with the chamber. The chamber does a good job helping us with that. Uh, touched on our criminal justice system uh, about the uh, the bond. Bonds is the biggest thing we can do, that. and there, there's a word for it. And I, I forget the word now. But um, improving our state's physical health. You know, through all this, South Carolina's rocking and roll. Uh, you know, we've we've continued to to have good balances. And one good thing, I've got to give credit to former Representative Wes Cox. The ballot initiative that you voted on this year for us to up the the amount of money that we had to put back in reserve. And when we say reserve, to all of us in this room, that's a savings account. That's what that is. We have to take that money. That percentage has to come right off the top before we even consider anything else in the budget. And Wes Cox wrote that legislation, and it was it was a, it was a good piece of legislation. And, and our hats off to him for doing that. But um, you know, every year the paper calls and says, you know, what's your number one priority you're going to do this year? For the last 16 years, it's been the same thing with me. It's constituent service. That's the one thing Mike Gamble can help you with, control. Uh, jobs, taxes, and education, I gotta have 22 other senators go along with me on, on a lot of the big stuff. But constituent service is the main thing. You call me with a problem, with an agency or whatever's going on, we'll get you an answer. And not always gonna be the answer you wanna hear, but it'll be the right answer. And most of the time you talk to a lady named Kathy Marsh in my office. Kathy Marsh is starting her 49th legislative session. She's been there forever. And, and she, uh, she has forgot more about the Senate than I'll ever know. Yeah, she's only 50, so <laughs> at least that's what she says. But uh, she, she is absolutely the best. But thank you so much for having us. And Paul, I've gone way over my short time limit. But uh, uh, thank you so much for what you do in our community, being a part of the chamber. The chamber does a good job, Pam, Kyle. And we, uh, you know, anytime we can be of help, please let us know. Thank you. And we are going to hold questions till the end, but we have uh, South Carolina Representative Ann Thayer over District 9. And I love one of her slogans has always been a woman's place is in the house, right? Let's welcome her. Thank you all. And, um, I hadn't even told y'all this yet. I don't even think my husband knows this, but they're always teasing me about how I boss them around. But anyway, I accepted a position as a whip yesterday, so y'all are really in trouble now. <laughs> 
Anyway, um, I don't typically bring notes, but it's 7.30 in the morning, and I just kind of slid on here, in here on two wheels this morning, and we've had such an amazing year that I wanted to talk about numbers, and I thought at 7.30 in the morning I'll get those numbers wrong, sure as anything, but it has been an amazing year in South Carolina. We've had um, an amazing economy. We've collected a lot of revenue, and I just wanted to kind of go over some of those things with you. As you all know, we returned $2 billion in money back to our taxpayers. This is the largest tax rebate and the largest tax relief that we've ever had in the whole history of South Carolina. A um, billion dollars came back to all of the taxpayers. Y'all should have received that by now. That left one third of our taxpayers in South Carolina with zero liability. We did one billion dollars in tax relief. We took the brackets for the four, five, and six percent and collapsed it down in three percent. We took that highest tax, bra tax bracket that most of us in here probably pay, that was seven percent. We have taken it down to 6.5%, and over the next five years, it will go down to 6% in increments. Unlike a lot of states, we did. We came out of this um, COVID, this tough economy, we came out of here good, and I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Um, Brian White, Dan Cooper, they used to be the chairman of Ways and Means, and because of the the good framework that they put into place, that helped us to end up where we were. We believe, we believe in saving um, our new speaker that I look forward to working with. He definitely is all about saving. Even last year when we had such a um, large amount of revenues, we added a billion dollars into the rainy day fund already. And then on November the 8th, when y'all went and voted, you helped um, you know, you supported increasing the General Reserve Fund and the Capital Reserve Fund, and that's huge. Right now, every dollar that we take in, 10% of that will go into savings, and that's just as important for our state as it is for you and, and your personal finances. One of the other big things that we heard about last year was election integrity. We heard you, we listened, we fixed that in South Carolina. We did such a good job. We actually have um, national groups pointing to South Carolina as putting forth some of the best legislation in the country. So your elections are secure here. You should feel good about that. And, and we're proud of the work that we did on that. And then lastly, you know, infrastructure and roads is always what we hear about. We also, with um, the extra money that we had last year. We combined state funds with some of our ARPA funds, and we actually put an extra billion dollars into um, transportation, and that's to expedite projects that are already out there, to certainly add new projects. Our state came out um, of, the, of this, all these COVID issues with more money than most states, and so we are actually in the ability we have the match that other states don't have to draw down that money. So we will continue to draw down that money. Um, infrastructure was a huge priority last year, and it will continue to be a priority going forward. So anyway, we had all this great stuff. So what are we going to do in 2023? Well, first of all, we're going to build off the great stuff that we've already done. Um, we have brand new leadership at the State House. I absolutely love the things that the new speaker has put into place. Um, he has brought forward um, a committee, and anyone that's a committee chair sits on his quasi-speaker committee, if you will. And we went about three months ago, we sat down, we actually came up with the plan for the house and what we were going to do in the house. And just in the last two days, I've been in Charleston. He is all about economic development. And he is very specific about we aren't just going to throw out a lot of bills. It's going to be quality over quantity. And so we sat down. We actually called our business leaders. We had 22 different business entities on the phone with us. 
and we sat down and said, this is what our agenda is. We want your input. We're going to do that every single month. Everything is going to be about economic development on the House side, and we want your input. We want to be partners with this state, and I really like that about him, and not only that, when we, when we put this plan together, in former years, it's always been, these are the bills we want to concentrate on. Well, that's not how we did this. These aren't the bills. This is the framework. So this is the framework that we're going to set forth to the rest of the members in the House, and they're going to come up with the bills. Everyone's going to have buy-in, and we're all going to work together. And so anyway, we're here. We want y'all to reach out to us about things that are important to you. And then we're going to write those bills and make some of this happen. But just a few things that I want to highlight. As I said, economic development is huge. So, of course, workforce development. And I'll see Terry back here. And call me this afternoon, Terry, and you make sure everything you want in the bill that I have notes on because... You're the guru, and I trust you, and we want to make sure that that happens. But workforce development, better job training and placement for sure is very important. Removing barriers and cutting red tapes for occupational licenses. And more than anything, and I don't know how many of you folks have to deal with them on a regular basis, but we are getting ready to rip LLR apart and put them back together because they seem to continually to be a stumbling block. And as I mentioned before, we will continue to work to improve infrastructure. Um, as you all know, education is essential to economic development. The two go hand in hand. We have a lot of things that's going on in education. As you know, we have a new um, Ellen Weaver is over our Department of Education. My roommate is actually now over that education committee at the State House, so I feel pretty certain I'm going to know more about education than I ever wanted to know because I bet that's all she talks about every night when we get home. So anyway, don't call me about education, Carl. <laughs> um, but anyway, education savings accounts. We talked about that last year. We got it through the House. We got it through the Senate, and I believe Massey killed it. Isn't that right, Senator Gambrell? So. I think that we've pretty much decided we're going to let the Senate send that over to us this year, and then we will work on it. But, you know, that sort of lets, um, it gives parents more choice for that money to follow the students. So we're going back with that. We're also going to address a lot of the concerns in higher education, especially with our teachers. Look at these programs. Are they all learning the same thing? Are they coming out and being prepared? And one of the other things, which isn't an issue so much here, a lot of our education issues, fortunately, aren't issues here. We have good schools here. Um, charter schools, I think, is going to see something where a lot more money is placed in there. Um, open enrollment, and I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but we have people in the lower part of the state that they have to go to a certain school because of their zip code. And that school is failing, and that is wrong. And so anyway, we're going to open up the enrollment, and the zip code isn't going to determine where you go to school. So um, again, I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but that's certainly one of our goals. And then making the school boards accountable. For years, we've been saying we, as the legislature, need to get out of the schools and just let the schools do their job. And we walk that way a little bit, and I think you would agree, and then we walk back a couple of steps, and then we try again. But we're really going to try and walk it back and go, here's your money, use it how you need to do it, and you show us the results. But we're going to make them accountable. It's just too large of a system for us to continually be accountable. That's what the school boards are there for, and um, I, I think that our educators will, will actually like that goal. Um, another thing that you don't always think about going along with um, economic development is public safety, and Senator Gambrell talked about that a little bit earlier. We're done with this whole catch and release program. Um, you know. Personal, the, all the PR bonds that were given for people, you know, we've got to do away with that. And the same thing, if you're out on bond, 
and you get picked up again, the penalties are going to be much safer. Businesses aren't going to locate to a state that they don't feel is a, a safe state. And fentanyl has become a huge problem here, and we are going to go after those folks that are, are dealing fentanyl. So those are just a couple of things. And another thing certainly is we're going to take some money and really fund the equipment and thing that our police departments need so that they have what they need to do their job. Um, and then lastly, of course, limited government. People want to live in a place where their taxes are low. So we're going to continue. Um, as long as we're prosperous, we're going to continue to try and give back to y'all and reduce that tax burden. Um, we're going to fight about against things like ESG, which is that environmental, social, and governance score. Um, we're working on that now, but we, we just have a lot of really, really good things going on. And then lastly, of course, we have the um, more of the social issues. We're Republican. We're going to continue to fight for your Second Amendment rights, and we're going to continue to fight for life. But we're not just going to fight for life. We're, we're going to fund that. We're going to put our money where our mouth is. And last year, we did about $2.4 million dollars um, we gave to the pregnancy crisis centers. Um, already, we have several bills already dropped to deal with adoption. You know, there's a lot of good people out there that would like to adopt, and they can't afford to do that because it's very expensive. So we're streamlining some of that. We're going to make that a little bit easier, but um, it's not just about protecting the baby in the womb. It's about protecting the baby out of the womb as well. So... Anyway, those are some of our um, agenda items, and I just want to say thank you for allowing me to continue to serve, and um, I am the new delegation chair, and it is a much bigger responsibility than I ever thought. I already have a couple new gray hairs, so anyway, I'll be totally gray when we're up here next year probably, but um, I, I'm not sure what they put on me, but... Um, I, try, I will try to do a good job, so please reach out to me with um, whatever your concerns are. Thank you. And now South Carolina Representative Thomas Beach with District 10. Good morning. Um, my wife wanted to apologize uh, for letting me attend this morning and looking like it's easy top. She's several times reminded me to, you know, trim it up a little bit and look a little bit more presentable. So. Uh, she apologized for letting me leave the house this morning, uh, looking this way. Um, so uh, I am really excited. I'm very optimistic about this next session. Um, I am the new guy, and I am. I have two ears and one mouth, and so I really appreciate and respect and admire our leaders here and uh, our veterans here. And we'll be leaning into them uh, to uh, know which way's up. I'm still learning where the re restrooms are in the, in the, at the state house. Uh, so there's a lot to learn. I'm, I will not be an expert in all things. Um, the reason why I'm optimistic about this next session, um, our, our speaker came up with an agenda uh, with economic growth. The people from across this country, they're coming. They're coming to South Carolina. They're making this place their home. I made this place my home for me and my ch uh, children um, back in 2013. The, um, I'm from uh, North Alabama. Now, North Alabama and the upstate have a lot of things that are very similar. Uh, but there's a big difference in one aspect, economic growth. In North Alabama is very rural. Um, and uh, we call it the brain drain, where... You know, kids, they grow up and to chase their dreams, they, they have to leave the state or that, that area away from their, their parents and grandparents uh, to, to do that. But not here in the upstate. We have a really wonderful um, manufacturing base. Uh, we're an insulated uh, market um, because we made investments here. The, the, the leaders that were here, you know, 50, 80 years ago, um, took the time to put in the proper infrastructure and, and the spending to make sure that we have what we have and enjoying today. And so I'm fully on board with the speaker's agenda, the Republican agenda, 
uh, the leadership of Ms. Thayer and our, and our veterans here to, to assist and, and make sure that we keep uh, the upstate uh, a strong economy and a growing economy. Um, so I'm very optimistic. Um, I'll keep it short and sweet. And South Carolina Representative Craig Gagnon, he represents District 11. Uh, welcome him with me. Good morning, everyone. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm Craig Gagnon. If you don't know me, I represent District 11, which is all of Abbeville County, part of Lawrence County now. Uh, it's my new district, part of my new district. And also, uh, for years, I've represented southwestern uh, Anderson County, Star, Iva, uh, and the environs down that way. Uh, my district's very rural, uh, and that's one of the biggest issues that, that uh, I would like to address uh, because that's my constituency in the cities we kind of forget and i, I i've grown up in, in the city and there's there's plenty of stuff around but you get down into abbeville county there's not a lot down there and so uh very rural area very uh very sparsely populated we actually didn't grow very much in my district that's why i had to incorporate more areas to fulfill my quota of uh of population um but uh, the main thing is if we can promote business. I've always, I've always been about business. I was the, the president of the Chamber Board in Abbeville for uh, twice uh, back uh, several years ago before I got elected. And uh, so I understand the importance of business and what business means to especially a rural area. Even if it's just 20 jobs, 15 jobs, uh, it means a lot to our, our district. And uh, so what I want to do, and, and my focus has been, is to always make th things easier for businesses uh, to come to rural areas and, uh, and to grow, and also in the big areas too, because if you change, change or make the rules more favorable for business, everyone uh, can, can take advantage of that as well. So if we get a little bit in our little area, uh, but in the big areas, you can get a, a whole lot. And uh, so, you know, reducing red tape, doing all the things that are necessary to promote a business to come in, train our workers. Uh, we've tried very hard. We're very, very fortunate to have uh, like Tri-County Tech to help uh, with our workforce. In Abbeville County, we have Piedmont Tech uh, and they do an admirable job as well. And so uh, the, the technical college system was a, a real breakthrough uh, in South Carolina and, and led the nation uh, in, in that sort of uh, education for their workers. And we have to transition out of what we did years ago. We were all about textiles and Abbeville County and, and southwestern Anderson County. Uh, all that's gone. Uh, we have a couple of places left. We have a, an old Millican plant, it's now called Sage, and, uh, and that's about all we have. And so uh, all the rest of those, I mean, the majority of people work there in those mills and they're all gone. So we have to have something to fill that void. Uh, and we talk, uh, talked about brain drain. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot of that going on in Abbeville County in order to if you become a professional and want to become a professional, you got to leave. you got to go somewhere else. You go to Greenville, go even here to Anderson, or you go to Charlotte or Atlanta. Uh, you can't get the job that you need in Abbeville. It's just not there unless you want to travel, you know, two hours in one direction. So the main thing is, is to, to, to focus on uh, promoting positive business, lower taxes, to kind of lift, as they say, the rising tide lifts all ships. So that's what, that's what my, my focus has been on for many years. I'm also uh, fortunate enough now to be on the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, I'm on the Transportation Regulatory Subcommittee, um, which takes care of our roads and bridges and that sort of thing. I've been very impressed with our uh, uh, Secretary of Transportation, Christy Hall, who actually uh, grew up in Abbeville County. And uh, so she's well aware of the problems we have in the rural areas and also in the, in the, uh, the big cities. Uh, and the priorities of the Department of Transportation have been formalized. Uh, they, they don't just go by political clout anymore. Like back in the old days, you'd have, you know, you just think of the smoke-filled room and these uh, cigar-chomping politicians saying, I need a highway in my district. It doesn't work that way. We have priorities, traffic counts, uh, uh, you know, uh, farm-to-market roads, are, they're important in our state. And, uh, but our interstates are as well. So we got to make sure our interstates are in good shape. Uh, I don't know if anyone's been on I-95. Parts of it are fixed, but brother, it, a lot of it's like a washboard. It's it's horrible. So you go from North Carolina and come into South Carolina, you're on smooth, and then you get to South Carolina, and it's a bumpy 
highway all the way through. So they're doing a lot of great things. We've, uh, the Department of Transportation has repaired or replaced over 250 bridges in the last four years. So I mean, it's a lot of bridges. Um, a lot of roads have been repaired. Now there are some places, and thank goodness in our district, Mike, uh, <clears throat> we had, <laughs> and that's one of the things you get to, you know, I'm gonna switch gears here and I'm gonna wrap it up, but uh, uh, as Representative Gambrell said, uh, Senator Gambrell said, uh, it's all about constituent service. And I, I'm, my constituents can find me just about anywhere. They, if they can come to town and they'll find me at the, uh, the, the, on the square in, in Abbeville or walking my, my wife's dog, not my dog, my wife's dog, <laughs> on the square in Abbeville. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I also, uh, you know, I just do a lot of stuff in the community, so I'm available. And uh, my, uh, my profession is, uh, I'm a chiropractor, and, uh, and so I have a lot of patients that come in, and I, I, they kind of keep me up on what's going on in the community as well, and kind of hold my feet to the fire if things get too far away. So I have a vast, broad uh, cross-section of the population that come to me, and, and, uh, but I'm always willing to listen. I represent my district, not Craig Gagnon. Uh, I represent the folks in my district. If they, if they want something that I'm not particularly cool about, it's, it's their, their decision to do that. So that's what I'm here for. But constituent service is important, and we, we're talking about the roads and bridges. We've had Senator Gamble and I have a constituent, or several constituents, that live in a certain area that their bridge has been out for how long? Five, six years? Man? Yeah, it's, it's been a long time. <laughs> And brother, they have been burning us up on social media because we hadn't got their bridge fixed. But the problem is hardly anyone uses that bridge. It's a very, you know, not many people know it's even there, but it's, it's a, a, a nice shortcut for the folks that know about it. But finally, finally we got it on the, on the list and they replaced it the other day. We could have a big ribbon cutting or something, but <laughs> you know, and have the folks that were uh, complaining line up at the bridge and walk across. And, and, but, but you know, the, those are the kind of things you, you get a lot of crazy stuff, but it's very rewarding uh, to help your constituents and, and to get things done. And that, that's part of what I what I do. Uh, I want to serve the people. I want to serve my district and uh, serve my patients as well, and uh, do the best we can. And and. That's what we do. And if you have any complaints about your legislator, you know, you can always, well, your senators too, for that matter. We, you know, anyone familiar with how much they pay the House and the Senate members in South Carolina? $10,400 a year, who, who said it? And uh, 10,400 bucks a year. And so if you don't like what your senator or representative's doing, you get what you pay for. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, you can't buy a good used car for 10,000 bucks. I mean, good grief. So, uh, but no, it, it's, uh, we, we don't do it for the money, believe me. So it's not like we have a huge gold mine and, and it's not like we're getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, but it, it's a service and that's why we do it. it you know, we, we do it, well, I'm not gonna say we'll do it for nothing, but uh, we probably would. <laughs> now they'll cut our pay, all right, okay. But anyway, uh, anytime y'all need to, to, to get in touch with me, you can, check with the chamber or look up on the internet where I live and I'm a stone throw from, stone's throw from the square in Abbeville. Been living there in Abbeville County for 37 years and, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. It's been, it's been a great opportunity to serve you and to serve the people of my district. Appreciate what you all business leaders do out here all the time. You gotta meet payroll, you gotta do all these things uh, and uh, you don't have, you can't print your own money. You gotta make it, you gotta earn it. So it's not like the government with a federal government, state government doesn't print money, as far as I know. Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering if they did. I, you know, I, don't, I don't know where it was, but, but I appreciate the opportunity to come speak to you this morning. And uh, thank you, Pam. Thank you. Sir. Thank you for everything uh, that the chamber does for us, and we appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Now we're going to open it up to questions and answers. It's probably easier for you guys to share this because I imagine some of the questions they might um, ask, uh, some of you, a couple of you may want to answer. So we'll just let you guys kind of go back and forth with that. How about that? Again, again, get what you pay for. America's money pad, by the way. Um, Y'all talk a lot about the catch and release and the PR bond and what's going on in the <coughs> systems today. If one of y'all could just kind of let us know 
how the Supreme Court Chief Justice of South Carolina was appointed and for how long and when the his term up. Our uh, judges, uh, the circuit judges, the administrative law judges, the Supreme Court justices go through a screening process. Uh, there's a committee called the Judicial Merit Selection Committee. It's made up of senators and house members that screen our candidates. As uh, a matter of fact, we're, we'll probably have an election for some um, seats in February. Uh, most of them have already gone through screening. And then once they're approved through the screening process, there'll be a certain date that they can actually ask for commitments from the elected by the legislature. And on the Supreme Court, it's pretty much a permanent type thing. They age out at age 72. A lot of our judges, even our managers, age out at age 72. Um, that's kind of how the process of, of how they're in a messed up something like that. But that's the way I, uh, you know, it's always had work. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of talk about how we elect judges, how we do things. Um, some states do popular elections for judges. I've got a colleague in Tennessee, they do it by popular vote. He says, for crying out loud, don't do it that way. Because what happens, you get a lot of outside money involved in the races. And, and you just, you know, is there problems and flaws in the way we do it? Yes. Uh, then we can be corrected. Uh, but overall, you, know, you hear a lot about, oh, well, South Carolina's the only state that does it this way, or there are one or two big states that do it this way, depending on what it is. But just because we're the only state of one or two of the 50 that do it that way, it doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, now, there's some things we've got to address, and we're going to address this year. I'm a judicial um, marriage program. But that's kind of the process of how it works. And uh, it's a, when you go through a pretty rigorous screening process. And then not everybody gets reported out of judicial merit. Anyone else? Um, you've been in there a long time, but this is the first time in the history of the state we've had a two thirds majority in both parties in one party. How's yep. that going to change things this year? In the Senate, we've had it since 2020. Uh, 30 of the 46 are Republicans. We're doing a very good job of getting together on things, and we hope that's going to help us. What we've got to safeguard is we don't want to happen in Columbia. What's happening in Washington right now is get splintered. That's the, that's the fear when you get a supermajority like that. We fight that every day. Uh, trying to, and so far the Senate on the Senate side, it's been pretty good. Uh, you know, I can't speak a whole lot to the House side, but on the Senate side, we, we work on that every week, trying to stay together and just keeping everybody informed of what's going on. I'm not going to rehash everything you talked about already, but you, you did mention the certificate of need and the, the probation, I mean, the uh, bail well, issue. Yeah. How, how much consensus do you think you'll find in getting those things dealt with? I think you're going to find a lot of consensus on the Senate side because we just had our caucus meeting six weeks ago, and that those were the top two things. CON we did last year, but the bond, the bond uh, reform was the big topic of conversation. I think there's one or two bills that's already been pre-filed. And what we'll do Tuesday, the first day of the session, we have to read all those pre-filed bills across the, 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 the uh, uh, podium to get them assigned to committees. And then the committees will start meeting. And then Wednesday, we'll have the inauguration. That'll pretty much be Wednesday. And then Thursday's mo what we call a perfunctory day. It's just for committees to meet. Because see, right now, we have to depend on the committees to report stuff out. Right now, there's nothing on our calendar. Uh, but we have to, and we've got, I've got two committee meetings Thursday morning that we're going to get some stuff reported out. And CON will be one, and I think Luke said Judiciary, they're having a meeting on bond reform and some things on that too. Those were the top two things that we that came out of our caucus meeting as our top two agenda items. I want to ask you a question that's so broad, but you'd be surprised when I mention this to people. People will say, I kind of know what that is. Tell me what Anderson County Legislative Delegation is and why it's important to the county. Well, Anderson County Legislative Delegation is your voice in Columbia. Uh, you know, we all, we're a diverse group. We represent all types. Some people represent, you know, like Ann Thayer's got a lot of the city of Anderson. I've got some of the city of Anderson. But I've also got a lot of rural 
And we've got a lot of rural in Anderson County still. I mean, you know, we've got a lot of development going on. But the importance of the delegation is we are your eyes and ears to the General Assembly and to state agencies. It's, it's why I made the comment about, uh, you know, if you've got a problem, reach out to us and we'll get you an answer. You know, we'll get you the right answer. And that's what we fight now, especially, especially with these things. <laughs> You know, we, we fight a lot of stuff. People get on there and quite honestly, they don't know what they're talking about. But we encourage people to get with us. And that's why I said sometimes the answer you get is not going to be the answer you want to hear, but it'll be the correct answer. And that's why, you know, used to years ago, before home rule, the, the legislative delegation wrote the budget for the county. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's old road commissioners. I mean, there are stories you wouldn't believe, you know. The deli so many roads. Oh, exactly, exactly. And, and I think Representative Gagnon hit it, you know, he said, oh, used to, you know, the cigar chomping guy sitting back, I need a road, so they got a road. But it's not that way anymore. But now, though you are, we are your eyes and ears, you know, and, and, and call it like the question that we got about the, the judicial selection process. That was an excellent question. I don't know if I've ever explained that to anybody or not in a group. And it's just things like that they need to know. Another thing that's been near and dear to your heart, and I know it's in your progress, what's the latest on rural broadband across the state? I, know I just had uh, the lady from AT&T come up to me. They've got a new tower coming online in my area. So that's always encouraging. It continues to be an evolving. We, we've you've been without broadband for a long time. Oh, ever. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, and that's what I tell everybody. Everybody that works for a utility that, that uh, offers broadband knows my address. I've been beating them for 16 years in the General Assembly, and every time I speak out, usually if I see somebody, I'll say, hey, what's my address? And put them on the spot. But they all know. But it's a, it's a question, and the thing, a lot of things, we've got to work through some red, there's some red tape issues that we can fix. Um, there's a lot of lines that have already been done in place, but they're classified as business lines. We got one that goes from Honey Path to, to an entity out our way, uh, goes through 54 people's yards, and they can't hook on to it because it's classified as a business line. That's crazy. That's just absolutely nuts. So anyway, there's a lot of stuff like that that we can do. And uh, uh, Nanette uh, at, at ORS, Office of Regulatory Staff, they've come up with the thing, dig once. Anytime a company's putting in like a some kind of new line or digging, let, hey, while well you got that hole dug in the ground, let's lay a pipe in there, if, or if not, a, even a line for uh, uh, you know for internet or whatever we can do. Just dig one time, keep them having to reinvent the wheel.